Hi, my name is Jo Rowney and I'm a HR manager here in Atos, UK and Ireland. I'm also the creator and manager of the career support program here in Atos, which supports our permanent employees in their goal to become interview ready. So they can move around the organization, developing and adding value as they go. The program helps employees to sell themselves and develop their careers within our organization. Due to the success of career support here in the UK, I am regularly approached to share best practice with my colleagues globally, as well as having presented in Durham University, and I've provided CV critiquing for London University too. I am a qualified assessor, and I am able to help employees at all levels. I'm about to share with you a very short coaching session called Kickstart Your CV. It's always um, a good idea to start with either reminding people or sharing with people what the actual purpose of your CV is. Um, contrary to popular belief, it isn't intended to be over the years a sentimental journey of your whole career. Your CV is um, there to serve a particular purpose. So that purpose is all about selling you. This is your representation and the aim of it is to help you secure an interview. At the point you are likely to need your CV, um, you need to make sure that it's in line with the kind of role that you are wanting to pursue at that moment in time and be mindful of that. As I mentioned, it's not an ongoing sentimental record. Just to kind of bring it home to you a little bit and explain what happens when a hiring manager looks at a CV, the sad truth is that they just skim read your CV, certainly initially, and they will only take between five to ten seconds to do that, especially if they have lots of CVs to look through at any given point. So it is critically vital that you get across all that important and relevant information that will really help to sell you. It's absolutely vital in this current day and age to highlight your value very quickly. We are in an instant world. It's very important. So there are some uh, rules, if you like, or guidelines that I will share with you that will make you have um, an effective CV. Keep it short, simple and relevant. Preferably no more than two pages. Include a professional statement at the top of your CV. That is something that will sum you up succinctly and a hiring manager reads that. Include your key skills and competencies. What is it you're known for? Again, that will go right at the top. Critically important to any effective CV is for you to highlight your key achievements, whatever they may be, and the positive impact that you had as a result of what you delivered very important and that is the, one of the most important things that will sell you and will help you to rise above the competition and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what should your CV be and what shouldn't it be? So this is my happy hiring manager up here on the left. Um, it should be quick and easy to skim read. I've already kind of said that. It should be simple and easy to follow. We want the hiring manager's eye to be drawn to the most important elements, which is your professional statement, your um, key skills and experience, and that really important key achievements and impact. Make sure it's accurate, truthful, and free from error. Don't be tempted to embellish you may well get caught out in interview when they question you on a certain statement that you've made and you can't back it up. 
it's important that your CV is free from error. You know, there is nothing more annoying or irritating as a hiring manager to see a CV or a covering letter even littered with spelling mistakes or, you know, things that don't make sense. Um, it just shows that you haven't paid attention to detail and you didn't really care enough to check it. So it is very, very important. Make sure that it's written by you. If somebody else has put something into your CV, you need to be able to justify that statement, as I said earlier, because you may get caught out in an interview. Get to the point, you know, just state what it was you were responsible for without going into huge amounts of detail about how a situation came about. Really focus on projecting what your key achievements have been and the impact, and I will show you how to do that, um, and, and make that relevant to what you're trying to achieve now at this point in your career. So what shouldn't it be? Great long detailed paragraphs. If I look at a CV and it's full of great long paragraphs, my heart sinks because I get a feeling that I have to wade through that. It puts it puts the review of that negative it puts the review of that CV on a negative footing straight away. Be careful about duplication. If you have some piece of information that is really important and relevant to the job that you're going for, you may well feel inclined to put that in your professional statement. You may then also put that in your key skills and experience, and it might also appear again under a particular role that you're capturing. Don't do that. Decide where the most important place is for that piece of information and only put it in one place. So if it's critical and vitally important, it needs to go in your professional statement right at the top. It just causes confusion otherwise. We've talked about make sure you can back anything up that you put in your CV. And get to the point. Don't tackle, don't go into huge amounts of detail about how to get uh, a point across. If you have been in work for a while, um, like I have, <laughs> um, and you have a CV that can be, uh, you know, quite long, then don't be tempted to just add a bit more on and add a bit more on, because that's what a lot of people do. And what happens is you end up with five pages of uh, a sentimental uh, track record of all of your career. You know, if you feel attached to that, then by all means, print it off and frame it and stick it on your wall. But if you are changing career direction or you're starting out, uh, you probably won't have that length of detail anyway. But just bear in mind what it is you're trying to achieve now. Okay, so when you look at CV templates, they tend to come and they're in a, you know, a particular order, which I will come on to in a moment. <clears throat> but that isn't the order in which I would tackle either creating a CV for the first time or uh, reviewing an existing CV. You know, try and be kind to yourself. And sometimes it can be a daunting prospect. And what people tend to do is the first thing that they see on their CV template is professional statement, which, of course, is right at the top. So that's the thing that they think they need to tackle straight away. It isn't. That is the last thing that you should tackle on your CV. This is the order in which I recommend you input information into your CV. So the first thing, the thing that springs to mind easiest is what you've been doing recently. Okay, so input your latest role along with any key achievements and impact, which I will come on to. Then input your qualifications, okay, because that doesn't always change massively over a period of time. Um, but you, you need to make sure that that's always up to date. So input your qualifications, which will be further down in your CV. Then add in your hobbies and interests. You know, it is good to show that you have a balance between work and a personal life. Try to show anything that demonstrates that you interact well with other, other people or where you have to demonstrate leadership skills. 
or attention to detail. So it might be that you're, I don't know, captain of a local sports club or that you are treasurer for the local parish council, something like that. Okay, that shows you working with others, interacting with others um, and really adds value. Certainly, if you do any voluntary work, it is a good idea to include that because that shows the kind of person that you are in a positive light as well. Then go back to tackling previous roles. If you have any or many, then go back to tackling that. And again, make sure that you include key achievements and impact, but only up to probably the last five years. Okay, some you know the the roles that you've had that are particularly relevant to what you're trying to do now. And then finally, when your CV is complete, you can then tackle your professional statement, <clears throat> and I will show you some elements that you need to include as part of that. So as I said, that is the order in which I would tackle it. That isn't the order in which it should be displayed. So simply, this is kind of the order in which it should be displayed. First of all, right at the top, you need to have your name clearly. You don't need to put in any more um, curriculum vitae or CV or anything like that. Hiring managers know exactly what it is. So put in there your name, your email address, your phone number, and your approximate location. Okay, you don't need to put your full address in there. Think about your data and protecting that especially if you are posting your CV on job sites. Do not put your full address, but they need to know whereabouts in the country you are located. Then you would have your professional statement. Underneath that, in a couple of boxes, you would probably have your qualities and strong competencies. Under that, your key skills and experience, or next to that. Then you would highlight the roles that you've had, and probably as part of that, you would put in there your key achievements and um, impact, then your qualifications, and then your hobbies and interests at the end. If you have a significant qualification that is really pertinent to the role that you're applying for, you should put that right at the top. If you have lots of key achievements and impact, then you might want to consider putting that under your qualities and strong competencies and giving that its own header all on its own. Okay, so there is obviously a little bit of room for manoeuvre, but that is approximately the order in which uh, you should display your CV. And of course, there are lots of CV templates um, out there on the market. This is roughly what your qualities and key skills might look like. So on the left here, I've put, you know, what kind of person am I? bring yourself to life a little bit rather than just having a list of skills. Over here on the right, this is what I'm known for. This is what I do. This is what I deliver overall. You can see here it's clear, simple bullet points. Do not put long paragraphs in here. They will not read it. So importantly, key achievements and impact, one of the most important things that you need to get right in your CV because this will really add value and it will sell you. So why bother with it? You know, it sells you. That's the whole point of your CV. And if you get it right, it means that the hiring manager can see very quickly and easily what you've done, what you've delivered without having to wade through lots of text. It will make you stand out above the competition. And there is competition out there. In our working life, you know, we all want people to work for us that actually make a real positive difference, and that is what you need to demonstrate. So uh, in all the CVs that I've looked at, one of the common um, things that I have seen is where people tend to think, well, yeah, I've done a good job, you know, in my job that I'm doing. That, that's a key achievement. It's not. Anything that is expected of you in your role anyway is not a key achievement because it's expected. You need to think about things that you have done in the past that you're really proud of. And it might be inside work, it might be outside work, it might be at university. 
what can you look back on and think, yeah, I was really proud of that. And that will quite often be because you really saw some impact of what you delivered. That is what we need to point out succinctly and clearly. When you think about stuff that you've delivered in the past, you know, what difference did it actually make? I would like to think that when we go through our working lives, we're always making a difference in a positive way. And if you feel that your whole role or anything that you do makes no difference, you, know, you perhaps need to, uh, to look at that. Uh, and that might actually be the fact, or might be the reason that you're looking for a new role. <laughs> Um, but you, we should want to make a difference. But unless you actually tell a hiring manager what difference you have made, they won't know. You know, people fall into the trap of they go, oh, yeah, that was a key achievement, and I'll write that. But actually, what does that mean? You need to go that one step further. One of the things that people quite often um, include in their CVs is the opening line, I helped with this or I assisted with that. As a team, we did. Okay, so what tends to happen in reality is if you write a statement like that, the hiring manager will immediately dismiss it. Because what they're interested in is what you personally delivered, not what you did as part of a team. Because of your contribution, unless you're clear, could have been that you were just making the tea. So you need to be specific, otherwise it will not count. And it's a wasted, or it takes up you know, space on your CV that could have been used for something more important. So this might help you think about how you add impact. So what I suggest is that you put me on hold for a minute and just have a read through these questions that I've put here and hopefully that will generate a little bit of memory for you. If you're struggling, it sometimes helps to turn it on its head a little bit in that think about what would have happened if you hadn't done something. You know, if you're working for a business, would they have lost money? Would they have been given a penalty for something that they didn't deliver? Would somebody else have missed out on an opportunity because you didn't help them? Things like that. Okay, think about the impact of what, you, of what would have happened if you hadn't done something. So I'm going to give you a few quick examples of key achievements. And again, if you need to put me on hold to read these properly, then please do so. So... The bits in black are what people wrote in CVs that I have critiqued, and, and the bit in red is the bit that I made them add on because it added value and impact. So this bit in black says that they delivered this patching repository, which was delivered in half the time that they would normally take. But what does that mean? Does that mean two days? Does that mean 100 days? You need to be specific about what you actually did and the impact. And the impact is in red. So again, another one. I monitored the supplier invoices for zero telephone usage over six months and managed to reduce the overall spend. Now, at first glance, you think, well, that's great. But what was that? Was that £1,000? Was it 500 Actually, it was £30,000 a year. Wow, all of a sudden when you add that fact in, you realize the impact of that work. That's where you really add value. The bit in black, that's what they put. And you think, well, that's a quite achievement. Yeah, because they've achieved those target scores. But actually, what did that mean? It meant we avoided paying a £15,000 penalty payment. Wonderful. Somebody created an automated process. Great. Actually, in reality, that meant we were saving 10 hours of work a week. Can you see the difference? Also include wherever you have received some feedback. 
some positive feedback because that not only says that you did a good job but that somebody thought you did enough of a good job to put that in writing it all adds value so just take a step back get that impact in there okay so professional statement this is what a hiring manager will always read unless it's way too long and they get that feeling of having to wade through it if they feel that way they will probably only read the top third so be very careful not to make sure it's too long and if it's too short it's probably because you're underselling yourself a little bit okay so make sure it's not too long or too short what are you known for and, and if you're struggling for that then ask other people ask your colleagues ask ask your friends at uni ask your parents you know ask other people that know you what would you say my uh, you know my reputation is professionally how do how am I perceived what am I good at because we do tend to be quite harsh on ourselves at times and it helps to get others opinion include any major achievement at the top if you feel that's appropriate and don't write it in the third person there was a stage a few years ago when everybody was doing that uh, and we all know that we write our own CVs well most of the time anyway okay so your CV final checklist try and keep it to two pages okay if it goes on to more if it goes on to three pages then everything that you include should absolutely be critical to the kind of role that you're going for if not try and condense it even more with uh, information that's older and less relevant perhaps ensure all your key achievements have a clear positive impact it might be one of those things where you create your CV and then you leave it a couple of days and go back to it um, I have known that a lot that you quite often see different things when you go back into it 24 hours later so that's uh, that's quite a good idea to do that ensure you attach a link to your LinkedIn profile or at least the address um, if, if it's not an electronic link they will quite often look at your LinkedIn profile so you need to make sure that it's consistent with your CV information make sure there's no duplications that I spoke about earlier decide where that piece of information should go and put it in there once always check your spelling and grammar if needs be get somebody else to check it as well if you are planning on posting your CV onto external job sites then automatic word readers that look for keywords and skills when recruiters are looking for CVs they won't be able to read any words that are under shading in your CV so be careful of that make sure your date of birth is not included there is no need for that anymore and you know not everybody has got Facebook but most people have so if you do have a Facebook fa Facebook page just make sure that it's either locked down very securely or that you wouldn't mind a hiring manager seeing your Facebook page if they took a peek and it might be that you want them to see your Facebook page and so if that's the case that you need to make sure that's appropriate when you're starting out on your career you need to proactively generate opportunities for yourself to shine whether that be in a working environment or in your personal life it all counts it might mean volunteering or undertaking activities that you come across either way these are all opportunities for you to deliver something and show your positive impact which of course you can then include on your CV one other lesson that I've learned over the years is whenever you feel a bit scared about something that you're taking on or you're out of your comfort zone a little bit these are the things that ultimately you will feel proudest of and they can end up as really positive entries on your CV give yourself exposure 
and keep your mind open to new opportunities. Challenge yourself, it does reap rewards. <laughs>